And to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for November 16th. And today's topic will be titled, Joy and Pain, the Prelude to Our Highest Calling. And it was a, a long title, so I decided not to write it all out today. So, um, but praise the Lord, and uh, sounds like it's going to be a good one. And before we get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And if you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, and you're trusting in something else, well, today is the day of salvation. And the Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And you can't uh, trust in something that's not going to save your soul, like water baptism or going to church or anything like that. It's through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. Amen. <clears throat> Alright, so today's scripture song will be uh, from 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. So press play here and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty if you're just joining. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> All right, here we go. For God, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, God, who commanded the light to shine out. Amen. All right, let's try that again. <clears throat> Short one. So let's try that again. Here we go. Second Corinthians four six, for God who Praise commanded the, Lord. the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. For God, for God, who commanded the light to shine out. Out of darkness has shined in, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For God, who commanded the light to shine out. Amen. <clears throat> okay, I'll put that back to the beginning and try that a few more times towards the end of the broadcast. Now it's time to dive into today's topic, which is titled again, Joy and Pain, the Prelude to Our Highest Calling. And that's for today, Monday the 16th. And the verse is from Nehemiah 8.10b, and it says, Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. So let us uh, have the joy of the Lord be our strength, because he is uh, our strength. Amen. And that's from Nehemiah 8.10b. And the author today is R.P. That would be the initials for... I believe it's Randy Pike. Let me make sure. Double check here. All right. R.P. That would be uh, Brother Randy Pike, and he's a missionary statesman from Greensville, South Carolina. Amen. So let me read you what he wrote today on this topic of joy and pain, the prelude to our highest calling. He says, True Christian joy is designed to cheer our broken spirits amid the darkest night. Amen. But often, our load is so crushing that we miss the good comfort of such help. Yeah, that's a 
very true there. We uh, tend to let the load get so big and not take it to the Lord right away, and we just let it keep piling up and keep piling up until it gets too much for us and starts crushing us and then takes away the joy and the comfort. Amen. And so let's remember that to make sure that whatever is uh, ailing us, that we take it to the Lord right away and have him take care of it. Amen. Before it starts getting too heavy. All right. Continue on. He says, God has called us into a service that involves all these experiences because his desire is toward us. Song of Solomon 710. Peter, writing to persecuted saints scattered over most of Asia, desired to write, Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. 1 Peter 1 8. Our heavenly call was properly described by the Apostle Paul as sorrowful yet always rejoicing. 2 Corinthians uh, 6 10. Uh, soon the winter and tempests of human life will be over, and we may confidently anticipate what is shadowed in the beautiful Song of Solomon. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of the birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give uh, give a good smell. Song of Solomon 2, 11-13a. Amen. And one day we'll be up with the Lord, and we'll be out of this uh, body, and be present with the Lord. Amen. Looking forward to that day. Hope you are too. All right. Continue on. He says, in the glowing, colorful terms, the Hebrew hymnist uh, seems to express a longing for the dawn of heaven's eternal joy. That is part of our hope, for it is the everlasting con uh, cons consum uh, consumption consumption of the saints highest calling amen all right so praise the lord one day we'll be up there with the lord and won't have to worry about uh all the troubles and the pains and the sorrows so looking forward to that day when jesus comes and calls us home amen <clears throat> all right so now it's time to dive into a couple more chapters from a biblical course on witnessing from brother james knox and uh, you can get this book and many others on the church website at www.jameswnox.org. So let me uh, get into the chapter here titled The Message. So we're going to cover the message and then the spiritual condition of the lost man. Let me uh, read to here the message. And it says, The sinner must know six things before he can be saved. Number one, he is a lost sinner. And the references are from Romans 3, 10 and 23, verses 10 and 23, 1 John 1, 8, Isaiah 64, 6, Ecclesiastes 7, 20, and Romans 5, 12. So number one is he is a lost sinner. Number two, he is under the wrath of God because of his sin and will go to hell. Romans 6, 23, Re Revelation 20, 14. John 3.36, Romans 1, eight, Ezekiel 18.4, and Isaiah 57.21 are the references. Number three, he cannot save himself, right? You can't save yourself, and no other man can save you. It's Jesus Christ who can save and does save. <clears throat> so you can't save yourself. And the references are Titus 3.5, Romans 3.20, Ephesians 2.8, Romans 11.6, Galatians 2.16, and 1 John 5.11. Number four, only Jesus can save him. That's right, only Jesus saves. John 14.6, and I believe that says, Jesus saith that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And that's John 14.6, 1 Timothy 2.5, Acts 4.12, Hebrews 7.25, 10.10, and 19, and 1 John 1, 7, John 10, 9, and 12, 46, 8, 24, and 6, 51. And number five, salvation is by faith in Jesus, not by works. 
Acts 16.31, John 3.16-18, and 3.36, Galatians 3.26, John 1.12, Romans 10.9, and 3.28. And number six is doing nothing is as sure a way to hell as outward wickedness. Hebrews 2.3, Acts 3.22-23, 13, 38-41, and John 3, 36. <clears throat> so again, the six things that the sinner must know uh, before he can be saved, again, is he is a lost sinner. He is under the wrath of God because of his sin and will go to hell. He cannot save himself. Only Jesus can save him. Salvation is by faith in Jesus, not by works. And doing nothing is a sure way to hell as outward wickedness. And that is the topic of the message with those six points. Now we're going to go into the spiritual condition of the lost man. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Roman numeral number one. It says, he is dead and needs life. And the references are Ephesians 2, 1 through 2, and John 3, 1 through 16. And then we have uh, A, B, and C subpoints. A says, physical death is a separation of the spirit from the body, James 2.26. B, spiritual death is the separation of the sinner from the life of God, Ephesians 4.18, 1 John 5.12, <clears throat> excuse me, and John 3.36. Then we have uh, two, uh, 1 and 2 here in these subpoints. One says, consider Adam separated from God and the garden, Genesis 2, 17. And number two, consider the prodigal's prodigal called dead while separated from home and father, Luke 15, 24 and 1 Timothy 5, 6. And then C says, the second death fixes this condition eternally, Revelation 20, 12 through 15. So that was Roman numeral one, uh, the subpoints there of he is dead and needs life. Roman numeral two says, since man is spiritually dead to God, his great need is life from God. John one twelve through thirteen, and then A uh, for the subpoint says he cannot make himself alive; only Jesus has the necessary life. Amen. John five twenty six. B. He must have a regenerating from God. Titus three five. First John five one. John five twenty four through twenty five. Galatians three twenty uh, three two, and Ephesians one thirteen. And C. We can present the truth. We cannot save the soul. That's right. So we can present the truth, but we can't save the soul. Roman numerals three. He is lost and needs to be found. And uh, subpoint A says lost can mean a thing is not in the possession of its lawful owner. B, lost can mean a person does not know where he is or how to find his destination. Luke 19.10 and 2 Corinthians 4.3. C, in Luke 15, lost and lose are used seven times. In one, a sheep was lost through straying. Luke 15, 1 through 7, and Isaiah 53, 6. Number two, a coin was lost through a fall. Luke 15, 8 through 10. And number three, a son was lost through willful, willfulness. Uh, Luke 15, 11 through 32. And D, restoration is possible. When one seeks the lost, or when conviction draws them back. Amen. Alright, Roman numeral number four says he is a slave and needs redemption. And then we have A through F for the sub, sub, sub points. Uh, uh, A is the sinner is under the control of or in the possession of another. Second Timothy 2.26 B. He cannot free himself. John eight thirty four Romans six sixteen and twenty and then seven fourteen. C the world is a gigantic slave camp. Yeah, 
That's the truth. Uh, Romans 8.15 and Galatians 4.3D. Christ came to redeem. Hallelujah. Galatians 4.4-5. 4, 4 Luke 4.18 and 1 Peter 1.18. E. He paid the ransom price for redemption. Galatians 3.13. Mark 10.45 and 1 Corinthians 6.20 are the references. And F, he can deliver those who trust him. John 8.32 and 36, Ephesians 1.7 and Galatians 5.1. All right, so um, number five, um, Roman numeral number five, says he is alienated and needs reconciliation. And then we have A, man is at enmity against God. Romans 5, 10, 8, 7 through 8, Titus 3, 3. B, he hates truth and refuses Christ's dominion. Romans 1, 20 through 21 and 28 and Daniel 5, 23. C, he needs to be brought back to repentance and submission. Luke 15, 32. D, peace can be made, but the sinner must surrender. Colossians 1, 20. And 2 Corinthians 5, 19 through 21. All right, so uh, Roman numeral number 6 says he is blind and needs sight. A, his understanding is darkened, Ephesians 4, 18. B, he is blinded by Satan, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. C, he cannot see the kingdom of God, John 3, 3. D. He cannot understand spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 2.14 E. He dwells in darkness and loves it. John 1.5.3.19 and Colossians 1.13 F. He needs to have his eyes opened. Acts 26.18 G. Christ came to bring light. John 8.12 and 9.5 and Luke 4.18 And to enlighten. Psalm 119, 130. And H, those who trust him are brought into the light. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 <clears throat> and Ephesians 5, 8. All right, so Roman numeral number, let's see, number 7. He is guilty and needs justification. All right, subpoint A is sin is a crime against God. Psalm 51, 4. B, man by nature, is opposed to God. Psalm 51, 5. C. This nature, called the flesh, loves what God hates and hates what God loves. Romans 8, 5 through 9. And then uh, we have number 1 here under C. Number 1. Man sins because he is a sinner. <laughs> That's right. Man sins because he is a sinner. Mark seven twenty one through 23 and Jeremiah seventeen nine. Number two, his portrait, Romans three ten through nineteen and verse twenty three also in Romans three. Number three, man sins in thought, Matthew five twenty eight. Four, man sins in word, Matthew twelve thirty four through thirty seven. And number five, man sins in deed, Je uh, Jeremiah forty four four and Proverbs six sixteen. D, crime is deemed greater. When its victim is innocent, so the greatest crime is to sin against God. Hosea 7.2, Amos 5.12, Titus 3.3, 3, Romans 1.28-32, and Psalm, Psalm 14.2-3. And E, the only way to be justified, declared righteous before God, is if one who has, sin, who has not sinned paid the full penalty for one who has sinned. This Christ did for us. Amen. Romans three twenty one through twenty six, five one through two, and Galatians two sixteen. All right. So let's see. All right. Roman numeral number eight. Uh, he is a debtor and needs pardon. All right. Sub point A says the sinner owes a massive debt to God, but is bankrupt. B. He owes God honor and service, but has failed to render render them. Luke seven forty one through forty two. C. He owes God his life and will account for its use. Uh, Romans fourteen twelve and D. 
God has provided pardon through the payment of Jesus' blood. Isaiah 43, 25, 44, 22, 55, 67, Acts 3, 19, 13, 38, Colossians 2, 13, and Micah 7, 18 through 19. And that is the end of the chapter on the spiritual condition of the lost man. And Lord willing, tomorrow we'll cover the roads and then explaining the simplicity of believing. Let's see how long this next chapter is. And uh, maybe we'll also cover, so we'll do the roads and then explaining the simplicity of believing and then maybe uh, jump into this uh, one encouraging a decision because that one's a short one too. So try to cover three chapters tomorrow. So, Lord willing to do that, and again, you can find this book on the church website at www.jameswnox.org. Amen. Alright, so let's go ahead and sing today's scripture song again, and let me see here, how do I want to do this? Let's go ahead and uh, do yesterday's first for a review, and then we'll do today's. Uh, so let me see, yesterday's was from uh, first or Second Corinthians uh, 4. 3 through 4, so we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll do today's one more time, and then wrap it up. Amen? All right. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But if our gospel, gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shine unto them. All right, here we go. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of which Bless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It is hid to them that are lost. Shine. Amen. All right, we're going to sing today's one more time before we wrap it up. Second Amen. Four, six. For God, God who, who commanded, commanded the light, light to, shine to shine out of darkness, out of darkness has shined, shined in our hearts, hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. We're going to sing it out one more time. For God, for God commanded the light to shine out in the darkness has shined in has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, for God, who commanded the light to shine out. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that'll about uh, wrap it up for today's uh, broadcast. And before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then devotional topic. And we'll be singing Second Corinthians chapter 4 verses 17 through 18, and it says here, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. So that would be tomorrow's scripture song for the 17th. 
And tomorrow's topic will be titled, uh, Christ Gives His Life. And the verse will be from John 10, verse 11. So that would be the passage tomorrow for this topic on Christ Gives His Life. Amen. All right, and then again, we'll cover some more chapters from the Biblical Course on Witnessing book from Brother James. And so, hope you'll join me for that tomorrow. And if you'd like to get your hands on these uh, devotional booklets, uh, you can do so. I believe you can order them from this website at www.timgreenministries.org. And if you'd like to learn the scripture songs more, you can do so by going to Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www dot daily scripture songs dot com and pray for them and all missionaries around the world and pray that uh those missionaries that are trying to get on the field are stuck here in the USA. Pray that uh international travel will open up and pray that God will uh, allow that to happen again and uh get them where they need to go. And uh you can be a missionary in your own backyard by going and talking to people in your own town. Amen. Because people here in the USA need Jesus just as much as they would do anywhere else. So, all right. So let's keep them in the prayers. Amen. And until next time, may the Lord richly bless you. And hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your Monday. And see you, Lord willing, later for the daily Bible reading. So, all right. We'll continue through the book of Acts. Amen. All right. So until next time, bye-bye for now. And thanks again for watching.